Hi, welcome to the Anarcha Archive. I'm J.C. Holman. Today, once again, for the purpose of shedding light on Anarcha's experience, we'll dip back into the legacy of the so-called father of gynecology, J. Marion Sims. Whoa, 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 whoa. When Sims died in 1883, his legacy was believed to be based on many things. A cure for infant lockjaw, the condition known as vaginismus, cancer surgery. But as time passed, Sims' cures or innovations were either debunked or shown to have been first proposed by others. For example, the so-called Sims position came from one of Sims' professors. His surgical cure for lockjaw was debunked when lockjaw was shown to be a bacterial infection, tetanus. The claim that he pioneered a new cancer hospital in New York City is false. He died before it opened, and he was actually kicked out of his own hospital precisely because he was performing cancer experiments. And not only was his vaginismus surgery debunked, it was soon shown that he wasn't the first to have observed the condition at all. For several decades now, all that has remained of Sims' legacy is the claim that he was the doctor who first cured obstetric fistula. But that's not true either. There were a number of doctors in America who cured fistula before Sims did. Metower and Hayward are the best examples. There were others in Europe as well. Sims' defenders have acknowledged this and have responded by saying that Sims devised an easy cure, one that went on to inform how fistula is cured surgically today. But that too isn't true. When Sims first set out to cure fistula, he conceived of a device that he called the clamp suture. This was a variation on quill sutures that were already in use. In short, the clamp suture worked by embedding short metal bars into tissue alongside a fistula, a hole, and then squeezing together the bars with suture material. The idea was that the tension of the suture material would be on the bars and not on the delicate tissue. This is what Sims was experimenting with for years on Anarcha, Lucy, Betsy, and the others. His hope was that if he could get it to work, the device would have his name, the Sims clamp suture. But the clamp suture never worked, not until, that is, Sims tried using silver wire instead of silk for suture material. He didn't know why silver worked, but it did. It would be some time before the germ theory took hold and people realized that metals have inherent antibacterial properties. But when Sims first published about obstetric fistula, he barely mentioned using silver wire for suture material at all. Even though it worked only about half the time, he was still trying to sell the success of the clamp suture. This would continue as Sims moved to New York City and opened Woman's Hospital. Woman's Hospital was basically launched on his personal marketing campaign about the fake success of the clamp suture. In earlier videos, we described how Nathan Bozeman became Sims' assistant in Alabama. He learned Sims' clamp suture mechanism, and he worked alongside Sims for several years before Sims and his family moved to New York. As you can see from this document, Bozeman even bought Sims' home and office. And as we described earlier, Bozeman did perform additional experiments on enslaved women, and he sometimes cured them, that Sims had failed to cure, some many times over. It's tempting to see Bozeman as a kind of hero, but the truth is, he was experimenting on enslaved women too, with something called the button suture. In 1856, Bozeman began to publish. He revealed that Sims' clamp suture, on which Sims' entire reputation was based, was heavily flawed and worked only about half the time. He proposed instead the button suture and claimed that it cured many women that Sims had failed to cure. This set off a massive feud between the two men. The Sims-Bozeman feud would, for decades, appear in early medical histories and gynecology textbooks. For what it's worth, Bozeman would be called the father of gynecology long before Sims was, but he has largely vanished from history. He would spend much of the rest of his life trying to deconstruct Sims' legacy. As you might imagine, Sims was livid about all this, and he immediately set about attacking his former assistant. What he did was arrange a series of experiments to test the effectiveness of the clamp suture, his device, against the effectiveness of the button suture, Bozeman's device. In other words, more than half a dozen women in New York City became unwitting victims in a bitter duel between rival surgeons. And the result? Neither the clamp suture nor the button suture contributed to the success of the operation to cure obstetric fistula. 
The reason the procedure worked at all was the silver wire. So, long story short, the device on which Sims had staked his entire reputation was introduced with his 1852 paper, and by 1856, it was completely abandoned. And that's exactly when Anarka came to New York City to be experimented on yet again. And what did Sims do? Did he acknowledge that the woman who was at the center of the fanciful story of his career had never been cured? No. Instead, about six months later, after Anarka was discharged from Women's Hospital, he gave a lecture suggesting that silver sutures was the greatest invention in modern medical history, second only to anesthesia. And while Sims didn't first conceive of silver sutures, he was more than happy to let the world believe that he had innovated the use of silver sutures in medicine. That's not true either, but it's something you still see today, sometimes in very reputable sources. Next time, we'll return to Anarka's story and find out what happened to her during the Civil War. Oh, oh, oh.